Good evening all, and welcome. Before the video begins, I want to give a big shout out to my good friend, Briefcase. He's a channel that specializes in forgotten cases through history of crimes and horror. I know it's a channel that most of you would be really into. I'm going to leave a link in the description and at the end. He is a quality content creator. And I would really appreciate it if you'd go and check out his work, as he's helped me out a bunch in the past as well. I'll leave a link where I said. But anyway, for now it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. Every time I stay at my grandma's house, I hear someone walking upstairs. It starts at one side of the room, casually walks to the other, and stops. This will happen maybe twice a night. I didn't start hearing it until I was about 14, when my grandparents made me start sleeping in the different room on the first floor, because they were starting to sleep in separate bedrooms. Regardless, both of their rooms are also on the first floor. For a little backstory, I have always been afraid of the upstairs of the house. I don't know why, but it's always freaked me out, and I refuse to ever go up there alone. I'm 23 now, and still won't go up there alone. There's one room specifically, though it's a long, narrow bedroom, when you open the door, there's a closet on the left and right, with a bed placed roughly in the middle of the room, and a window on the far side opposite the door. I was told while I was growing up, by my grandparents, that the sons of the previous owner claimed to see a gorilla coming out of the closet at night. It would dance around the room, and then go back into the closet. I thought nothing of this story, until I had to start sleeping in the other room. The room which was located directly below the scary room upstairs. So we all go to bed, all the lights in the house are off, and I'm still awake, lying on the bed. Then I heard it, thump, 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 starting at one end of the room upstairs. It got closer to me, passed right above me, and continued to the end of the room where it stopped. I'm wide awake, terrified out of my mind. It was no question to me that I had heard footsteps. I knew that slow, casual pace. I was freaked out, and went to my grandpa's room. I told him what I'd heard, and he told me the house is old, and that it creaks. But he turned the dining room light on for me, so that I felt a little safer, and I tried going back to sleep. Then it started again, this time from where it ended the first time, by the window upstairs. It walks over to me again and stops when it reached the door. I thought it was over until five seconds later, when I heard it coming down the stairs. One, two, three, four, five, silence, as it reached the landing, then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and silence again, as it reached the first floor. I was frozen in shock. Whatever it was, it was on my floor of the house, and sadly unaffected by the dining room light, I was staring at the doorway to my room. The dining room light was shining in, and my vision began to distort. I felt dizzy with fear, so I pulled the blankets over my head, and suddenly, I heard a scratching sound from inside my room. I knew exactly where it was coming from, my grandpa's gun case. It was a very obvious sound, scratching on the wood long scratches down the front of the gun case door. 
I could even hear the door ever so slightly tapping against the frame as each scratch began. I tried to scream, and I couldn't. I took a second to take a deep breath and let out a loud scream. In seconds, my grandpa had made it to my room, and I was relieved. Needless to say, he didn't believe me. So I did what any normal person would do. I draped a sheet over the side of the bed and slept underneath it. I wrapped myself tight in a comforter, put on headphones, and turned my back to the door. There could be a party of ghosts in my room, and I wouldn't even know. The next morning, my grandpa told my grandma about what happened the night before. She said, Oh, that's silly. You know, your cousin woke up the last time she stayed here. She came in my room saying that she heard footsteps. I ended up sleeping under the bed for the rest of my stay. I've stayed there countless times since that happened, and I hear the footsteps every time. I sleep on top of the bed now, but keep my back to the door and sleep with my headphones on. I haven't heard it come down the stairs since that first night, but if it does, I don't want to know. I'm in the don't believe in ghosts category of people, but I have an experience that I just simply can't explain and I have tried for over a decade. I had been homeless for a while, having fled an abusive home when I was 17. My friend had an abandoned trailer, so I started sleeping in there. At first, I didn't have money to turn on the utilities, so I slept there and just turned them on one by one. It's significant to this story, because it meant that there were no creaky pipes, and no hum of electricity. Almost right away, I started hearing strange noises. What sounded like footsteps down the hall and in the kitchen, and cabinet doors opening and closing. At night when I would leave for work, which would be the third shift, I would pull on the door and crank the key. By the time I got out to the car, I would hear a click, and the lock would be undone. Figuring I was retarded at locking the deadbolt, but it spooked me, and I would just take off every time. About a week goes by, and I get paid at work, so I begin turning on utilities. I'm a girl, so naturally water and the telephone have to come first. Well, one night, I'm on the phone with the girl that inherited the trailer, and I hear the footsteps again. I had stopped talking and she asked what was wrong, and I joked that the trailer was haunted. And I'll never forget her words in response to this. Don't worry, she is friendly. She proceeded to tell me about an old lady that died there. I flipped the hell out, and she insisted that she was safe. Somehow I convinced my friend and her two-year-old daughter to move in with me and things just got weirder. The little girl would play with something unseen in the kitchen. The cat would purr and play with something in the kitchen. If she was screaming and crying in her room, one of us would get up to check on her to find her giggling and talking to someone. When we were drinking or smoking pot, things started acting up. The cabinets would open, things would fall out of them, and we would be very creeped out. The final straw was one night, when I was with some dude in the living room. There was a back door that was attached to the living room. We opened it once but never used it because we didn't have a key for it. Right in the middle of us doing it, it swings open so hard that it slams into the side of the trailer. I thought for sure it was a tornado or something. I wrap the sheet around myself and go to close the door, as it was completely still outside. That and the deadbolt were from what scared me the most. In order to lock the front door, you had to pull the door shut, or push from the inside, and it took significant effort to turn the key to deadbolt it. Why did it keep propping open? The cabinets, 
Well, I kept figuring maybe the trailer was tilted or something. But they had the little magnets that kept them from closing. So, I just don't know. 11 years ago, before my wife and I got married, we were trying to save a bit of money before the wedding, and so were living with my mum. My wife was working at the hospital in the city next to the beach. She worked 12-hour shifts, and I worked 10-hour shifts. On my days off, if she had to work, I would take her and pick her up because the hospital wasn't in the best part of the city, and staff had to ride a trolley to and from the parking lot to the hospital. So, one evening we get home. My aunt and uncle had come in from out of town to visit. My wife smoked at the time, and so did my uncle and aunt. We're all sitting outside with them talking, when suddenly my wife goes quiet, staring towards the end of the driveway. She slowly takes her cigarette, which she just lit, and snuffs it out, looks at me and goes, I've had enough, I'm going inside. She stands up and goes in without another word. I stood up and asked her what was wrong, but she just continued without looking back. What she didn't know at the time is that I already knew what it was. Because when I looked down the driveway, standing there was the figure of a woman that I had seen many times before, just staring at us. She had mid-length curly brown hair, wearing a white nightgown with a blue robe. She always seemed to come when new people were there. From time to time, she would come into our room and just stare at us but my wife had never seen her. I go inside and ask my wife to come back out, and at first, she refused to, but eventually gave in and came back out. I had never mentioned this apparition to her, so I was curious what she saw, so I started asking her to tell me. At first, she said that she was tired and wanted to go inside. But I saw her too, so I wanted to verify if we had seen the same thing. Finally, I just bluntly said, Honey, what did it look like? She looks at me and her face goes white all over again. And she said, If you want to look for yourself, she's by the truck. Shivers went up my spine, but I had to stay calm. I asked her to describe her to me. Her voice was shaky, but she said brown curly hair, white gown, and blue robes. I had to keep myself from jumping out of my skin. It was the exact same figure that I had seen multiple times. I told her it's okay, and that I see her from time to time as well, and that she means no harm. My wife looks at me, and said I don't care if she does or doesn't. We're leaving here as soon as we can, because I don't want to see her again. From that day, we left a few months after, and never saw her again. I like to think that maybe she was just protecting my mum, who still lives there with my sister and her family to this day. She wasn't the only ghost at the house, as my sister and her family have witnessed things, but they haven't seen the brown-haired lady in quite some time. So my husband is a major skeptic, and that's why I was shocked at what he told me what he saw last night. Or actually very early morning, between 3 and 5 a.m. I kept trying to get him to admit he was joking, but he was dead serious, and assured me that he definitely saw something that he could not explain. He said he woke up, and couldn't get back to sleep, so he went downstairs. This is not unusual for him. He often wakes up early, and doesn't go back to sleep. We live in a row of townhouses. 
our downstairs is at a second level floor with our living room slash dining room slash kitchen area and a sliding glass door that opens up to a small enclosed desk and overlooks a strip of wooded area that makes up our backyard. He was sitting in a recliner that is positioned directly across the room from the sliding glass doors and with nothing but the TV on. He could see the outside clearly enough, although there is a reflection in the glass door caused by the lights from the TV. I hope that my layout of the room makes sense to you all. After about half an hour to 45 minutes of watching TV, some movement outside catches his eye. He says he turned to look and plainly saw a woman floating several feet away from the desk, just hovering in his line of sight, right over our backyard, maybe eight to 10 meters from where he sat. He says that she didn't seem to notice him. She slowly floated across our backyard towards the right, his right, until she disappeared from his view. He didn't get up to see where she'd gone. He just sat there and tried to process it. Since we live in a row of townhouses and the area is pretty well lit, I'm wondering how many backyards she traversed and if anyone else saw her. Unfortunately, it would be super weird to bring this up with any of our neighbors. We've only lived here for a few months and don't know anyone well enough to ask them about something so bizarre. I asked him for as many details as I could when he told me that this happened. He felt he could rule out sleep paralysis or any sleep related hallucinations as he had been wide awake for a while and there had been no alcohol or drugs involved either. As for the floating lady, she was not close enough and it was too dark for him to make out any details, but she appeared to be a humanoid, female, with long white or light colored hair and a slim build. The clothing appeared to be a light wispy material, possibly a gown, but again, the darkness and distance didn't allow him to see any details. She didn't glow or emit any light and looked to be completely solid. So basically, my husband saw what appeared to be an otherwise normal looking human woman, beside the obvious floating and flying thing, which he says made her seem ethereal. My husband says he's been lost in thought and walking around in a stupor today because he absolutely doesn't believe in the paranormal, but he can't explain what he saw. When he first told me about this, he identified it as a ghost, but after mulling over the details, the closest thing we could think to is maybe some kind of fae. It's hard to know what to call a strange lady hovering in your backyard at 3 a.m. Any ideas are most certainly welcome. Also, just to add a little bit more, she's been seen three times since that last event. Every sighting occurred during the early hours and he would be wide awake during this time. She won't always appear in the same spot, but usually it would be around our balcony. She also never looked directly at him. I personally have never seen her. But a couple of weeks ago, I woke up and went downstairs with him and he made me eggs and toast. I was sitting on the couch with him when he suddenly shouts, look, there she is. But it was too dark for me to see anything without my glasses. And he said that she had vanished as soon as he had said something. Last night, something very different happened. I fell asleep on the couch and my husband was awake watching TV. At around 1.45, he shook me awake and he was clearly upset. He told me that she had showed up again. He said he felt strange, like he was being watched and out of the corner of his eye, he saw her right next to him. 
This time she was standing on the seat of the couch, bent over with her face inches from his. She vanished as soon as he noticed her, but he was still very shaken by the experience. He asked me to come over to his side and snuggle him. I had to sit right where she was standing. And when I laid my head in his chest, his heart was pounding. I asked him if he wanted to go back to our room upstairs, but he said no. And when he calmed down a bit, he told me that he felt like he might have scared her just as badly as she scared him. He thinks maybe she was just being nosy and went in for a closer look, not expecting to be seen, which makes me wonder if she's done it before and checked us out while we were asleep. Even though she scared the crap out of him, he feels like she's harmless, but I don't know. This last incident seems aggressive to me. I think I would feel a lot better if I knew what the hell she was and what it is that she wants. I don't expect to have the answer to these questions anytime soon, if ever. I was 10 years old and lived in Germany. I used to live in a big apartment complex that had a ground floor and a spiral staircase that led to a downstairs with two bedrooms and a bathroom where my brother and my bedrooms were. One day I came home from school when I was in fifth grade. And as soon as I opened my front door and got into the hallway, Every door that I could see was opening and closing by itself, and you could hear a high-pitched screaming coming from the downstairs basement area. I basically shat my pants and bolted out the door and waited for my brother to come back from school. He was four years older and in the ninth grade. When I saw him coming with his friends, I told them what I'd seen, and they went inside and saw the same thing I did. I saw them running outside, and they told me that they were not going back in, and they were going to the town center for a while instead. I was too young, so I waited outside until my dad came home from work, which was two hours. I got so impatient, I ran inside my house and sat in the living room corner with the TV on until dad got home. The events had stopped when I ran in. So it was basically just me watching the hallway for an hour with cartoons in the background. When we told my dad, he didn't really think much of the story and nothing really came from it. Later that year, when I was trying to sleep, I woke up to the sound of someone digging through my toy box as if they were looking for something. As my night vision was adjusting, all I could see was a light slash blackish outline of a little boy slowly moving through my things. I was frozen in fear for about 10 minutes until I finally just jumped out of bed, turned the light on and jumped back into bed. I spent the rest of the night laying in bed, staring at my toy box until everyone was waking up for school and work. After this happened, I refused to sleep downstairs, and my dad moved me to one of the upstairs bedrooms. After living in that house for five years, everyone in my family living there, dad and brother, have seen some scary ass stuff happen. My dad recalls seeing a dark man walking down the hallway when my brother and I were visiting our mom over the summer, and also recalls doors being opened downstairs that he was sure he closed. Friends that have stayed the night, and people who have stayed for a number of days here, have also seen the dark man in my old house. I think that my old place might just be haunted. When I was about eight, my family moved into a new house. There were two bedrooms on the second level, and one downstairs, and my new bedroom was the master bedroom upstairs. I loved the room for its size, but also found it creepy. What was most creepy for me 
was the storage units built into the wall. They made me feel very uneasy. This unease slash terrified feeling was there every night when lights would go out. At the time, I thought I was just a kid who was scared at night because the room was big and new. That soon changed when I started waking up every night, early in the morning, feeling like someone else was in the room with me. I would run and turn on my light, see nothing, but fall back asleep with the light on, waking up with it that way in the morning. This continued every night for quite some time. My bed was against a wall, and one night when I had just gotten into bed after turning off the lights, I started falling asleep close to the edge of the bed. As I went to roll over and face the wall, half asleep, there was a face of a smiling old woman that quickly vanished. I jumped out of the bed, turned on the light finding nothing, and I woke my parents and they said it was a dream. From that night on, I slept with my back pressed to the wall to prevent the same thing from happening again. That was my first sighting. Shortly after that, we got a cat. The first night we had her, she came into my room early in the morning, after I was already sitting up with the light on. First thing she did was go over to the storage unit. Actually, she crept over to it, sniffing the whole way there, her eyes wide and tail up and fluffy. When she got to the door still sniffing, I heard a voice whisper, Hi, and she bolted from the room. I knew I wasn't imagining it, because she clearly heard it too. And I slept on the couch that night. The nights following, I didn't want to sleep in my room. But after my parents had caught me on the couch after the cat incident, they told me I had to sleep there, and it was my imagination at night. The next encounter started off like the others. I awoke early in the morning, as I usually did, except I was very cold, and I felt like someone was watching me. So I rubbed my eyes and sat up. Standing in the middle of my room by the storage door was a man who seemed to be transparent and lit up glowing an almost bluish color. He was heavy set with black, thick rimmed glasses, in camo pants, a hat, and a camo jacket, with a white t shirt. He was holding his hand over his stomach. He looked at me, then he looked down at his stomach, and moved his hand slash jacket to reveal a wound and blood. He looked back up, making eye contact, with a, again, confused expression on his face and I ran out of the room with my blankets. I slept on the couch that night, not caring if I got into trouble in the morning. I told my parents the next day, but they told me it wasn't real, and I was probably dreaming, and I had to sleep in my room. Following that night, I slept in my room every night. No encounters were quite as vivid as that one, but they didn't stop. One early morning, I woke up and had a quick glimpse of an old woman in a purple ball gown dress, rushing out of my closet and disappearing a few steps later into the storage unit. Another morning I woke up and there was a young boy in overalls just standing by the unit innocently. I looked at him, went under the covers and went back to sleep. I didn't feel like he was going to hurt me or even knew that I was there but I had no choice but to stay in that room. I never quite got used to the feeling and encountered only glimpses after the camo guy, but I learned to live with it. We moved from the house when I was 12 and I never experienced anything like it again, even though according to my parents, it was just my crazy imagination. My parents joke with me about it now, thinking that I was just making the whole thing up. I am still a skeptic in regard to the supernatural and ghosts, but I have no explanation 
for what I now know I saw as a kid. When I was younger, I had a bad nightmare that eventually roused me awake. My routine as a child, if I had a nightmare, was to call my parents from their room. Their room is just down the hall, so they would hear me, pick me up, and bring me into their room. This particular night, my dad was still at work. He has always worked fairly late, so my mom was the one who came into my room to pacify me. Keep in mind for later, my father was not home at the time. He did not come home until much, much later. She brings me into their room, and I was lying down on my dad's side since he wasn't home. My dad's side faces the door that leads into the long hallway. The door was open, so if I peeked over, I could see the hallway from where I was laying. At one point, I had an eerie feeling. I just felt like something was there, and I had this strong impulse to look. I looked into the hallway, and sure enough, there was a bright glowing white silhouette of a man. I couldn't discern too much of his features, but I could make out a friendly smile. He had glasses and was walking towards me. I recalled later that he looked like a younger version of my father that I'd seen in family photos. The figure seemed nice, but I was already terrified as it was. I quickly looked away. I let a few moments pass and garnered up the courage to look back out into the hallway. The figure was gone. I didn't tell anyone for years after that, until I was much older, when I finally told my dad about what I saw. He told me that he was supposed to have another brother, but that he died in the womb. I like to think that the figure I saw was him. From what I could make out, he did look a lot like my father. I am still very much a skeptic about ghosts and ghouls, but my brother's house has a lot of creepy stuff happening on a regular basis. Some examples. Doors that have a metal L latch would just pop open as if someone had flicked them. Usually when people were in the room changing, the refrigerator door would fling open by itself. We would constantly hear the sound of footsteps from the bedroom upstairs when nobody's there. And my old dog who died when I was younger had a very specific sneeze where she'd sneeze maybe three or four times in a row and her collar would hit the floor and rattle. If the house is quiet, sometimes you can hear her walking in the kitchen or her sneeze. One time, my brother and his wife were setting up all the evidence of Santa and Rudolph on Christmas Eve night after the kids had went to bed. They both cut some celery and carrots and drank some milk. As they both left the kitchen and headed towards the living room, they heard a boom and turned around back into the kitchen. Where they just were was the plate and the stalk of celery, sticking straight up on its end, and the knife was jabbed into the stalk. Also, literally every kid who sleeps over has claimed they couldn't sleep because the man with the hat on is watching them on the stairs. More than one person has seen a figure like this walking down the stairs from the corner of their eyes. And my wife, who didn't know anything was weird about the house yet, went to feed the dog. This was while my brother was on vacation and I was at work. She ran out of there because she heard whispers coming from the hallway and swears she saw something moving in the shadows. My only experience that I personally witnessed, which I still think was because I was overly tired or something, was when I spent the night and was on my side facing the wall sleeping and something whistled in my ear. It was loud enough for me to jump up and looked around. I didn't feel any breath on me, just the whistle. So I turned the other way and tried to fall back asleep. And then it happened in that ear too. I can't think of any more creepy stuff, but my dad, who is very religious, claims the house has evil spirits in it. 
my friend who was a ghost hunter, said he would investigate the house if they wanted to. But my brother and his wife are too afraid of stirring things up. So they said no. I lived there for about six months and visit all the time and have never seen or heard anything. But who knows? I do live in upstate New York, where we have a lot of historic buildings and haunted history. But again, I've never seen anything spoopy enough to rustle my jimmies and claim that ghosts are afoot. When I was a kid, I slept on the top bunk. My twin brother slept on the bottom bunk and my oldest brother slept on a trundle bed pullout just in front of the bunk bed. One night, I woke up and couldn't move. I was lying on my back, and all I could do was move my eyes. I was terrified, but I couldn't scream. From the corner of my eye, I looked out through the open door into the dark night, to where my father slept down the hall. I hoped I could see him, or tell him somehow, but all I could see was blackness and shadows, and then the shadows were walking. The black of dark took the form of a man, six foot tall, as featureless as any shadow on a sunny day. It was pure black, dark, abysmal. The shadows were walking into the room, and I could not scream. I watched him as he stepped from the floor onto my oldest brother, asleep on the trundle bed, but he didn't even wake nor move. The shadows had no weight, and made no sound. I watched him grab the bar of the top bunk for leverage and step onto my twin brother's bed. He didn't wake up either, and I was now at eye level with the shadows walking. Gracefully and silently, he pulled himself to the top bunk, where he straddled his legs on either side of my mortified stiff body. He sat there for a moment, as though staring at me, then he placed his hands on my chest and pushed down hard and violently, angrily even, against my ribs. Just one horrible, aggravated force all at once. I blacked out from the pain and woke up the next morning still very much in pain all over my chest, but there were no bruises. I didn't tell anyone. I knew they wouldn't believe me. I don't believe me. My lungs strained to breathe that week, and it eventually went away, and the shadows have stayed in the corners. I'm a rational, logical man. I dismiss ghost stories out of hand and chalk them up to superstition or hallucinations brought on by sleep paralysis. But what I felt and saw that night, I can never forget what it was to see the shadows walking. Just about an hour ago, I was biking with a friend north on Congress Avenue towards downtown Austin, Texas. We were both about to start our shift for a food delivery app. We were engaged in a lively discussion as we approached the four-way intersection of Riverside and Congress, generally a dangerous place for cyclists. I was telling my friend about how I get stressed and feel bad about a lot of meaningless things while we waited for the red light to change. We were side by side in the bike lane, with not too much space between us. Suddenly, a third cyclist rode up and squeezed between us, very close, intimate even, a bit too much for a stranger. He was tall and pale with dark brown hair. He had on a beanie and a Coke bottle, glasses and a flannel, jeans and black Converse. His bike was old fashioned with wide silver handlebars and he could have walked out of a 60s era movie about reefer's madness or just be your everyday hipster with no respect for personal space. He says, as if he's been in our conversation the whole time. Don't worry, don't stress. Try to be kind to everyone. 
His face was serene and had blue eyes staring into the distance over the bridge towards the capital. Just then, the lights turned green. I looked at the third cyclist, but he didn't budge, so I took off. I'd only gone a few feet when I instinctively looked to my left, and behind me, I only see my friend Ryan. The third cyclist had completely vanished. As we crossed the intersection, Ryan said, Was that your friend? Where did he go? Looking behind us, we could see far into every direction, but he was gone. Dude, I've never seen him before. We were both dumbfounded. That was a freaking ghost cyclist, said Ryan. I'm not exactly sure what happened. All that I know is that we were talking for mere seconds, and then we realized he was gone. It was such a random and mystifying experience, in a place where I'm sure countless cyclists have died over the years. I'm thankful my friend was there as a witness though, as I feel like we've bonded over this experience. And going forward, I will surely follow the ghost cyclist's advice. I'm in my room, sitting in front of my computer, working late at night as usual. I have to go pee, so I head out the door. I'm staying with family for a few weeks, so I try to be super quiet to avoid waking anyone up. To get to the bathroom, I have to go around a sort of left-hand U-turn. I've stayed in this house for a month or so, every year for as long as I've been alive and I've done a lot of midnight peas, so I know the way by heart. I go out the door, take a few steps, turn left, few steps, left turn, down the hall and into the bathroom. I turn the light on in the bathroom, do my business, turn the lights off, and start making my way back towards my room. I don't want to turn on the hall light at this point, again, to avoid disturbing family so I'm basically blind. I feel my way down the hallway, turn right, few steps, turn right, and suddenly, holy crap, I swear I saw a shadow or something move. I stop dead and listen, because I'm still totally blind. Nothing. So I take another few steps and swear to God I saw a shadowy figure move towards me, directly in front of me, out of the solid, wood door to my room. I stopped, again, and feel panic start to set in. This is the creepiest thing I've ever experienced, since childhood nightmares, and I used to have some pretty messed up ones, like that my dad was trying to kill me. I'm not imagining things. I definitely saw a shadowy thing move towards me in the dark. I take one more step towards my room, close enough to the door handle to grab it. And the shadowy, creepy as hell moving thing comes towards me again. It's getting bigger this time, and now it's right in front of my face, inches away. But I can't quite focus on it. I start to freak out. I actually consider calling for help. Sleeping family be damned. And that's when my nose bumps into the mirror that hangs on the wall next to my door at a 90 degree angle. Turns out I got really disoriented and never made my second right hand turn. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I hope you liked tonight's ghost stories. It would really mean a lot to me, like I said, if you could check out my good friend Briefcase. The information regarding his channel is at the top of the description and at the end of the video. It might even pop up now, really. He runs a really cool channel all about cases of creepy and strange people, murderers, all that kind of things throughout history. But he focuses on cases that may have been forgotten and that most people have never heard about. I actually got a sneak peek of the one coming out tomorrow and it's so good. I'm gonna let you guys know about it tomorrow as well, but seriously, you, you have to watch it. They're so good, they're really interesting. So if you're not done listening to stuff, 
I really recommend that you check him out. I'm sure you won't regret it. But anyway, I'm going to leave it here. Link's on screen now. And for now, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome. And I'll see you in the next one.